All right, guys, I got a better video with some feedback from a lot of different people, and I found a lot of better ways to improve uh, the performance on Tears of the Kingdom. And I went from going from about 15 to 25 FPS uh, to about 25 to 30 FPS, uh, maintaining 30 a majority of the time. Um, I'm going to link some mods in the description uh, for you guys to download as well as a shader cache now this shader cache uh, I noticed that when you're running the game it builds the shaders here and there and it does that constantly while it's playing the game and these cause an ass load of micro stutters so just downloading a shader cache in and of itself already improves a lot of the micro stuttering related issues uh, which is why in my specific game I was running like dog water FPS because it was constantly building shaders and you know after it does this for a little while after you start running around moving around it builds those up and it doesn't need to load those again but there are shader caches that can just have a majority of the shaders built for you now when you download all of these uh, these mods, it should be in all one gigantic folder. Now these dynamic FPS should help with 30 to 60 FPS users, but if you're just trying to have a stable 30, um, this shouldn't really matter too much. Uh, this is going to fix some issues with black screens and stuff like that. This is going to make the game run at 30 FPS. This is going to fix cutscenes. And then these just all pretty much disable a bunch of garbage that's just hitting performance overall on uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Now my settings, uh, CPU, I noticed that unsafe works a little bit better. And instead of auto, which is what I had bit before, graphic settings, we want Vulkan, always want Vulkan. We want to use the disk line, a disk pipeline cache. Um, Exclusive full screen 1610 because the Steam Deck uh, uses a 1610 and if you have it at 169 you'll basically have these black boulders at the top. So kind of annoying, not the biggest thing, but I don't like black borders while I'm playing my games. Um, resolution is at one times um, and then just have pretty much nothing really changed with uh, the FSR. Advanced graphics, we want to make sure accuracy level is high, and we pretty much want all of these on, uh, and as anti optic filtering is default. So once you got those settings per the game uh, set up, and to show you where do you install these mods, you open up this folder right here, and they'll all be right here. So just to show you where you put those mods once you have them extracted by 7-Sip or WinRAR, you right click on the game, open mod data location and you just pretty much drag and drop them from your downloads into there easy peasy now for the shader cache it's gonna be a little bit different you're gonna you know right click and then you want to open transferable pipeline cache now within that folder there's gonna be a Rio Jinx and a Yuzu you can use which one you are using either or but this is mostly for Yuzu and you just want to drag and drop them in here. Um, this will basically prevent a plethora of micro stutters and help with the game's overall in per performance. Also, I have test trialed uh, the early access build because some people were saying that it has performance increases overall, and it does. It does have a performance increase. Um, and I definitely noticed it. Now, running it in desktop mode, I noticed has a little bit less uh, stable FPS for some weird reason. Um, so we're gonna run it in the game mode, but at the same time, I wanna make sure you guys use Cairo Utilities, make sure you have uh, the Yuma set to four gigs, use all the recommended settings, and we should be good to go ahead and return to uh, the gaming mode. So now that you're back into the game, we're going to go ahead and boot it up, assuming that we're using the Steam ROM Manager, because there are some things available to us in the Steam user interface 
versus the actual desktop mode and I'll show you what those are here in a second. Uh, we're going to be playing around with the GPU clocks and power tools specifically. These I've noticed can cause a massive performance increase um, no matter what you're dealing with and a couple of people commented on my last video telling me to try a couple of these things and I've only noticed good things coming from them. Um, game's gonna take a hot minute to load but I'm pretty sure we can load oh, these up. So in the power here you're gonna want to have the use per in-game profile 6060 you want manual GPU clock control. Now a, a per someone before said that having the GPU clock frequency set to a hundred has worked well for them um, and I do not doubt that in my personal experience I noticed that 1600 works just a smidge bit better um, so with the GPU clock frequency max it, max it out run it around run around for a couple minutes then set it to a thousand and then run around and just see how well that works for you um because you can play you can play with it at will it's not like you have to reboot the game or anything to play with it so that's that's helpful um now in here we're going to be going to power tools and this is uh where the more important thing comes into play um a couple of people were stating that uh disabling cmt helps and some others were saying having it disabled ruined uh their frames per second so we're gonna rock without it for a minute so those two settings they seem to depend on what version of steam you're running um and what what basically proton versions you're running i pretty much have everything up to date i'm not running like an outdated version or a specific version i am running everything that is up to date as of may 18th so uh, i have everything i don't have anything outdated as far as settings or any of that um so you guys can see now that i'm running at 25 to 30 Versus in my previous video, I it was I was pretty much stuttering left and right when I was running around in this specific area, and you know the frames are still a little bit here and there, they're still a little bit all over the place. But I mean, con compared to my previous video, this has improved the overall frame rates immensely, and and I mean, you might have a couple of settings that you're gonna have to play with here and there to get it right um but these are some things that i've found that have i mean day and night difference from the previous video and i'm sure you know the more we play the game the more it's gonna help you know the more mods that come out the better the game will run but having uh the shader cache most importantly has removed a majority of the micro stutters and for th i mean that alone makes makes the game fully playable because those micro stutters would happen every time you look every time you swing something every time a new action plays anytime anything happens you would basically have a micro stutter and that fucking blows so having that shader cache alone should help you guys improve your performance and you'll still have hits here and there but overall going from 18 to 25 to a damn near solid 30 has drastically improved it without having to lower the resolution because i've noticed a lot of people will lower the resolution to like a 0.75 and they're like oh yeah it runs fantastic but to me personally i feel like that's just dog water I don't like the game looking that ugly, so I'm trying to keep it at least at 720p and not trying to compromise too much on the resolution because anything below that, I feel like it's just it's not even worth playing at that point. Um, so I'm mostly focusing on trying to keep those that resolution high. Now, if you're still struggling after this video and you know resolution is not the most important thing for you or maybe if the you know the not so consistent frames are a little bit bothersome or you're trying to shoot for the 60 fps 
then oh yeah absolutely definitely drop that resolution to the 0.75 and you should see a lot better performance after that for sure um, if it's really that bothersome but for the most part I feel like this is pretty solid and pretty comfortable and the crashing and the black the black screens are all fixed and overall I, I'm pretty happy with all of the responses I got on the last video and all of the things that I've tried out that they've said and I mean we're already moving right in the right direction um, I'm gonna try to load up a different save here with a different area to try to see if I can get some different results um, I don't think I transferred anything else yeah, I did not that's alright I mean this is a pretty decently large area with a lot going on but I hope this video helps you guys um, it's definitely an improvement over the previous one I will continue to discover new ways and new mods that can help improve all the overall performance and I will make new videos with new ideas the second I find them